Welcome back to another hot episode of Crystal's Hot Seat. Today we have director Vincent Williams, and he's here to talk about his hit play, King Hector II. And here's your host. Hey everybody, and good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to this edition of Crystal's Hot Seat. We have a wonderful guest in the hot seat today, Vincent Williams, wonderful play director. Good morning, how good are you? Good morning, and how are you this morning? Great. Well, thanks for being in the hot seat. All right. Are you ready to crank this seat up here? I'm ready to crank it up. I'm ready. I've been ready. I, when I left the last time, I've been, I've been ready since You've been then. ready since then. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you have a play coming out next month. Tell me. So you've been uh, working with the, the actors and everybody. Tell me all about it. Okay. Well, the play is entitled King Hetley the Second. And it's going to be held November 16th, 17th at East Bank Theater over in Bossier City. Uh, the admission twelve dollars, mm -hmm. and this play actually talks about an uh, African American uh, who struggles, and uh, it's set in the the Pittsburgh uh, district. It's written by August Wilson, and for those of you who are familiar with August Wilson, all of his plays he went through a ten play cycle, and all of his plays are from the Hill District because actually that's where he's from, mm -hmm. and so all of his plays are set there. In this play. Uh, King actually struggles. Uh, he's trying to get himself together throughout this whole, all of this dialogue, and, and the audience is going to figure out, they're going to have to figure out what happens at the end with King. But he's trying, he's, he just recently had, uh, got out of prison, so he's trying to make a comeback and trying to make it all work in his favor. Now, speaking of um, the main actor, we have him in the studio with us today. Yes. Talk about some of the people, the players in your play that's that's helping you, because you're the mastermind of it all. I heard about it. <laughs> well, uh, my main actor, the, uh, the young man that's playing King, his name is Cortland Thomas, but we all call him Cole Lane. Uh, he's a rapper as well here in the Shreveport area. And Cortland is just, he's just the most committed actor that you that you ever want. I mean, I mean, anybody would love to work with him because he's, his commitment is just remarkable. And I uh, also have uh, my classmate, uh, Sharon Pinson. Uh, she's going to be playing the role in the play. And then we have Crystalline. Uh, she's a teacher at Booker T. Washington. She almost sounds like me. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a um, uh, young man by the name of Melvin. Uh, and he's going to be playing the little Act, actually, the pimp daddy in the play oh, by the name goodness. of Mr. Okay. And uh, we have a young man that plans to come on board with us. His name is, his character name is Stu Pigeon. Oh. And Stu Pigeon in the play, he's, he's actually, he's a very religious guy, but he's confused. So some people may look at him as a little off the chain or a little crazy or whatever, but you know, he really try to keep everybody together. And then we have a young man. Uh, that's a theater major from Bossier Parish Community College uh, named Michael. He just recently graduated from high school and he just actually finished a play over at Bossier Parish Community College last week. So we have six characters and we have a stage manager that's coming on board with us which is uh, Cole Lane's daughter. And she's actually a student at Bossier High School. Okay, so we have a wonderful cast. We've been working hard. Uh, this is not an easy play to do because for those of you who know about August Wilson, all of his, it's, it's, it's real hard and you really have to pay attention and you really have to work at it because he has a lot of monologues in his play, you know, so we, we're trying and I, and I can promise you a great show, you know, because Cortland has done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I wanted to ask you, what is, what do you think that people will receive the audience members from this play? Why did you select uh, this play? Well, uh, I'm, I'm, think, I'm hoping that they will receive that it, it does not matter where you come from in life. Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of where you're going and what, and what you want to be. Uh, we have some struggles because King really, really struggles throughout this whole uh, play, but he's actually trying to come up. So hopefully I'm thinking, I'm hoping the audience will receive something positive. Uh, don't look at King as being a negative person. Because this play does have some uh, uh, strong content. Well, give me some examples. What uh, do you mean when you say well, don't look at him as a negative person? What is it that he does? Well, he actually just at Without the beginning. Without giving too much away. Right, okay. Well, actually, King just got out of prison mm -hmm. uh, uh, for killing someone. 
And, and, and so therefore he wants to have a, a positive role in life now. But every time he gets to that point, something always comes and it draws him back. Yeah, so, so that's why I don't want you to look at him as a negative person because he's really, really trying. Mm. All right, and so basically, so this is going to be um, at a theater in Bossier. Talk about the selection of the theater for me. Uh, East Bank is a very, very quaint theater. Uh, only holds 133 seats, and that's what I like about it because the, it, it, one thing when you do a production, you want the audience, and like I tell my my cast members, you want to make the audience feel that they are right there. Yes, you oh know, my and so by that being a a 133-seat theater, the audience, like the stage is here, but the audience is just right there with them, you know. So that makes it just more intense. I'm, so, I'm getting right, excited. Right, right, <laughs> yes. right, right, right. So, yes. uh, so it's, uh, it's been around for a long time. And actually, they have revitalized that whole area. So it's really like a little theater district, you know. They have several re restaurants around the theater, and, and they built a hotel right up the street. So it's... It, the Boja has it going on theater wise. Yeah, now. right, right. And I heard you were one of the only African American directors to be able to um, to use that theater. So that's a congrats to you. Well, that. thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we're excited about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. How can people again? How can they get tickets? For well, you can get tickets from uh, each one of the cast members, uh, or you can just pay at the door. Uh, most of the uh, the house that we have, they usually just pay at the door anyway. So admission twelve dollars, and we're doing it Friday night and Saturday night. Okay, and for those of you who are not familiar yet with November sixteenth and seventeenth, just think of it's when Cato and Bolger get out for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Definitely remember that. Friday and Saturday. Right, right, right. Friday and Saturday. Well, we thank you so much for sitting in the hot seat. We definitely always enjoy you. Love, love hearing about this exciting play and definitely want to go and check it out. And is there a telephone number people can call if they want more information? 318-393-6259. Uh, Again, 318-393-6259. All right, everybody. Vincent Williams, wonderful job to you. Congrats wow. for everything you've done over the years. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for sitting in the hot seat. And oh. we'll be right back after this commercial break with one of the, the lead actor, actually, That's right. by the That's way. Correct. So right. you stay there. Okay. Well, you... Be okay. You stay in the studio. Okay. You stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. August Wilson's Place is that they're genuine people. So it's not a reach to get in character because these are people who just deal with the human condition. So um, for this particular character, for some reason, I tend to play older women. So I've kind of become accustomed, get accustomed to that uh, demographic. But I guess one thing that I do when I when I think of a character, when I receive a character, I kind of plot out like a like a, a scheme. I may write it down. I may just do it in my head, but like scheme out who they are and like what their life entails. So she's a mother. So that's a whole persona that's different from my own because I don't have any children. So like I do have to kind of embody things that I don't know. But like I said, Wilson's plays are they lend themselves to reality so well that it's not terribly difficult to get into character. Uh, why do you think it's important for people to come out, see this play, and then enjoy it? <clears throat> um, one reason it's important to come is because we need to support the arts in our hometown. We need to support local artistry. And we need to support black artistry and black theater. There are, I don't want to be rude, but there are a lot of things that we do in the city. And, and many of them don't benefit us at all. But theater of this caliber and, and artistry, August Wilson, period, was so brilliant. And we can see that brilliance on stage. And that's something that a lot of people don't get to experience, that level of artistry and brilliance. So it's special when, able, when you're able to see a, like a game change in playwrights work on the stage in your hometown. So, I, I mean, it's, it's vital that we continue to support good artistry and and independent artist my last thing for you is uh what do you think people will get out of this uh this play and how long have you been acting for 
What people will get out of this play is that things don't, the human condition doesn't change very much. In my class, I try to teach that a lot because we read things from all over, I teach English one, and we read things from all over the world, all years, but just seeing the common thread of the human condition and how it doesn't really change, that people have problems, people want to feel loved, they want to feel appreciated, that transcends time. People want to feel safe and, and and even the negative attributes of the human condition, wanting revenge, wanting to to fight and being angry, these things are natural and they, they transcend all time. But this is something that people can relate to. Their motifs and themes that people can understand from their own lives. So what they'll feel is enriched and related and familiar with the strife that's in this play. And it's so particularly on time because some of the motifs are the things we're readily dealing with now. We have hashtags up and down our Facebook timelines about them right now. So it's, it's, it might be a play that's set 30 years ago. It might be a play by a playwright who unfortunately is no longer with us. However, it's so very much pertinent today that when they come, they will not regret that they came and they will leave enriched and and if nothing else, thinking about their own condition, thinking about the people around them and thinking about what it means to live in this world connected with other humans and, and our common threads that, that maintain the human condition. Um, and how long have I been acting? Probably since I was born, I don't know. But <laughs> pro I, I think my first actual play was Macbeth in seventh grade at Cattle Middle Magnet. So that was my Bill Dung's Roman into the theater scene. And I've just been, honestly, I didn't act for a while because I just started writing poetry and doing that. But now I'm back in theater. So yeah, about, how long is that? Like 15 years? Yeah, about 15 years, yeah. We thank you so much for your time, and we, I'm looking forward to seeing the play. I really am. Thank you. We're looking forward to having you in the audience. Close Captain is brought to you by Habanaros, Mexico's urban cuisine restaurant. If you'd like to win tickets to go see the Saints in New Orleans or win gift cards from Fandango, please go to iKoalaRadio.com and check out the rules. Good luck. Hey everybody and welcome back. We're so excited that you're with us this morning. We have in hot seat Portland Thomas, the main character in this play. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. We thank you so much for your time and thank you for being with us. We're going to talk about your character and just the play in general, the director and just everything. We're going to pick your brain. Okay. So tell me about uh, your character. Uh, King Hedley II. Okay. Well, to me, this is, this is my... Uh, a way of explaining King. King, he he pretty much a, a tough person. He don't take nothing from nobody, and he kind of get himself into a situation, different situations when he only trying to do the right thing for himself, not knowing that he probably he could be hurting others or that's around him and anything. Wow. But uh, King, he just really tough. He he kind of hard headed in a way, but he has an honor and dignity about himself. So he's he's very strong. You 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 can't push over King. You can't just say anything. You can't call him no any kind of name. You just gotta call him King. You know, it, and he's a he's a very tough guy. So, so uh, I. I mean, is this opposite from your regular self? How did you get into character? Well, I kind of relate with King because right, I don't take nothing from nobody, and I I'm, and I believe in all human beings should have. Are, are equal exactly. and should have their, their own opinion about something. Mm -hmm. Even if we disagree on something, doesn't mean that we have to be enemies. We just disagree on something. Mm -hmm. With King, he he feel like, he that's how he feel, but he feel like if, if you disagree with him, you his enemy. Mm -hmm. 
that's how he feels now. I don't feel okay. like that. But okay. yeah. the king, he's he's very tough and very, you know, uh, lion hearted. That's what I want to say. He's very lion hearted when it comes to his belief and what he believes in. Mm -hmm. Like he don't think it's wrong from the, the stealing from the rich and giving it to the poor. Mm -hmm. But then too he'll steal from the rich and put it in his pocket, yeah. you know, to protect yeah. his family and what's for him. Yeah. You know, and King is all about survival. Mm -hmm. That's what he that's that's what's on his he sounds a little bit complex and complicated. Yeah, he's very complicated, especially when he's he's very he easy easily snaps. Now he now you get on his good side by getting along with him or whatever, mm -hmm. but if you step on his bad side or yeah. step on his seeds, yeah, it's over. He mad. Yeah, he just explodes. Yeah, I wonder, is he loyal? Yeah, he's a he's a very. I think that's one of the things about him. He's very loyal uh -huh. and. He would take. He don't take betrayal very well. Yes, you know. I can definitely relate to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good. Talk about. So you've been acting for years with the with the director. Tell me all about that. I'd like to hear about that. I actually been acting for eight years now, wow. and uh, I've been doing music since I was eleven. Before we had a group called Camouflage Soldiers back then, when uh, in Boulder City. So growing up, that? yeah, growing up. Uh, oh, what year? Uh, that was actually 2000. Okay. okay. 2000 all the way into 2010, I think. Yeah, 2010. Mm -hmm. My grandfather uh, uh, put me in a play one time, and and ever since then, uh, uh, he wanted always wanted me to see me do plays, but I never was really interested. <laughs> I still wanted to do my music and everything. Yeah. So one day my grandfather got real sick, and he was like, Grandson, I, I really want you to like pursue your dreams and to act and doing something positive. You know, before I leave this earth, I want, you, I want to see you do something like that. Even though he never got the chance to to see me do another play again. Oh, that's so sad. You know, yeah. Uh, that's when I met. That's when I met Vincent. And uh, Vincent, one day I came up to. Southern University looking for a poetry night yeah. so I can rap. <laughs> yeah. And I saw I saw a group of kids sitting in a huddle and everything. I thought it was poetry night. So I walked over there and I said, excuse me, is this poetry night? Yeah. And Vincent was like, No, this is not poetry <laughs> night, but you can take these but you can take these lines and sit down right there. So yeah, ever since then so I great. was like, Okay, I'm part of something. And we started with uh my first play with him was My Soul is a Witness. That was actually my third play. That was my third play, but it was my first time working with Vincent. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, he called me, hey, you want to do another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, you want to do another? Then my role just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And in 2012, yes, 2012, I did Malcolm X with him. I played Malcolm X. And that was, it was very tough. It was very hard. But working with Vincent, he, he walks us through. He's not only a director; he's a teacher. He's an acting teacher, and he te he teaches us, you know, how to uh, use our gestures without trying to think about it. Just be free, you know. And you can kind of use your own words in a way, or your own. Just make sure you feel yourself before you feel the character. Then, when you feel yourself, you can notice what who the character is. Then you'll notice yourself in the character. If you can see yourself in the character. You that's what Vincent always taught, taught us. And he even taught so many generations of children. Mm -hmm. And now my daughter, who's a part of this play with us, she's 16 years old, Amari Tanae Stevens. She go to Bolger High. She been, she been uh, watching Vincent doing, because doing, she's been coming to my shows throughout the years. Yeah. So she's been watching Vincent and me doing, doing this. So this is not new to her. Right. So it's like it's another generation. There's a greatness about to come under Vincent, under the uh, the, the lady. Um, uh, Laura Gibson. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, awesome. Awesome. It's 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 it's, 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 yeah. it's it's very impressive because yeah. I can know I know that my daughter is the next one. You know, after me, after and me after Vincent, and and it's 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 amazing what us black people can do and, and what we can. Do to help each other and to uplift each other. We we are making history as we speak, and wow. that's.
that's that's all I got to say about that. It's, it just amazed me. I was about to go in tears early, but yeah. I don't do that. No, no, that's, I mean, hey, this is a hot seat. You just be natural. But real quick before we wrap up, talk talk about why do you think this is so important for our, you guys to talk about Af- African Americans to come and see this play and bring their kids and just everything. Yes, um, I think this play right here relates to today. You know, with a lot of a lot of emotions in in out there in the streets, in in our homes, in our at our, at our jobs, we deal with a lot of emotions built up on the inside of us. And I think what what would help people with watching this play, it would it would let them see that certain things that we sacrifice are not always you know for us. Sometimes it be for the next person. Sometimes it be for the next life. Cause we can we can be sacrificing. We think we doing it for us, mm-hmm. but actually it can be stripped from us and done for someone else. You know, I think that's what people would if they just come and see this place. Very intense. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. It's very emotional. You will cry. Yeah, because you got me emotional sitting in the hot seat yes. today. So wow, we need to bring some uh, blocks of Kleenex. <laughs> to see this. Yes, yeah, you, yeah, yes, you most definitely gonna have to bring a box of clean yeah. And it's very touching. Um, August Wilson, uh, he wrote Fences, mm-hmm. and you know uh, August Wilson wrote, wrote some very tough plays. And I think with this one, he's he's trying to hit the nail right on the head where in the urban area mm-hmm. where we stay at, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you, what's going on, the things that we hear about on the news, things that, that we face, yeah, yeah in our community. Yes. And, and I think uh, for a lot of young men, young black men, I think it's good for you guys to come out and see this because you can learn something from it. It's a very, uh, I put it in, in another word, it's a very gangster play. Wow. So you're like, it. everybody in the play got a gun. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I like those, yeah, I'm gangster. <laughs> That's me. And also King got this long scar on the side of his face. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, well, I, I remember a play director mentioned that uh, that he killed the man. Yeah. Uh, he killed the guy for cutting him on the side of his face. First he wanted, it, first he was trying to correct the guy for calling him a certain type of name. But the dude didn't want to do that, so he pulled out a box cut and cut him. Wow. So ever since then, he's been dealing with that on the inside of himself. Like I was saying, emotions. Wow. He's been dealing with that on the inside of himself. Mm-hmm. And, and really almost like uh, a self He's trying to self uh, justify himself for the things that he do, the things that he do. Not, not saying, not. Uh, he's not a bad guy, but he's just confused in a way where he want to let his emotions up. And it's King King Hillary the Second by August Wilson. All right. Well, we thank you so much for sitting in the hot seat and just being real and letting those feelings, you know, just come out. And we definitely hope people come out and support you. And, and support the play. And so tell us about the dates and times again, real quick. Um, the date is November the 16th and 17th, and it's going to be at East Bank, the, East Bank Theater. I'm sorry. Yeah, in Bossier. In Bossier City, oh, awesome. uh, 630 Barstow Boulevard. And um, the, the 730, I'm sorry, the time is 730. And um, also, please be there on time because sometimes when Vince do his plays on the first day, yeah. it be packed out that so many people can't come in. Oh, so. wow. So you tell the people at home it's going to start at 7 and they'll be there on time. Uh, yeah, please yeah, be there on time at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock. Even though it's 7.30, 7 o'clock. Be there at 7 o'clock. All right, we thank you so much for being in the hot seat with us. We definitely enjoyed you. We will see you back here next Sunday, same time, same place. Have a good morning, everybody.